In this video, we're going to learn how to make a savings calculator in C++. So our savings calculator is going to function like this. We'll prompt the user to enter an initial deposit, as well as an annual contribution, a rate of return, and the number of years to grow. Then we'll create a table like this, showing the growth in the savings over that number of years. We'll have a column here for the interest earned each year, We'll add the interest and annual contribution to the start balance to get the end balance. So the first thing we'll do is declare variables to store all this information. So we'll have here double balance is equal to zero to store the account balance. We'll have double annual contribution to store the annual contribution. We'll have double rate of return to store the annual rate of return and we'll have int total years to store the years to grow. Then we'll prompt the user to enter these values. So we'll have here, C out, and then initial deposit colon to prompt the user to enter the initial deposit. And we'll have C in balance to store that initial deposit into balance. Now we could say that a negative balance doesn't make sense. So we could have here, if the balance is less than zero, we'll tell the user that's a problem. So we'll say C out and then initial deposit must be greater than or equal to zero, followed by an inline. And we'll actually use a do while loop to have the user enter the initial deposit again if the balance is less than zero. So we'll have do, and then down here, we'll have while balance is less than zero. So this is a do while loop. The first time through, this loop body is going to run no matter what. And we'll prompt the user to enter the initial deposit. But if the balance is less than zero, then this loop body is going to run again. So the user is going to be continually prompted for the initial deposit until they enter an initial deposit that's greater than or equal to zero. Next, we'll prompt the user to enter the annual contribution. And we're going to say the annual contribution also has to be greater than or equal to zero. So we'll have do and then C out with annual contribution colon. And we'll have C in and then annual contribution and we'll have if the annual contribution is less than zero we'll again tell the user that's a problem we'll have c out and we'll have annual contribution must be greater than or equal to zero followed by an end line and we'll have while the annual contribution is less than zero so the logic here is exactly the same what we'll do is continually prompt the user to enter the annual contribution until they enter one that is greater than or equal to zero. So next, for the rate of return, we're going to say the rate of return must be positive. The logic is going to be almost identical to this, so we'll copy it. We'll copy this and paste it here, and we'll have rate of return, and here we'll have rate of return must be greater than zero. And here we'll have if the rate of return is less than or equal to zero. And here we'll have rate of return less than or equal to zero. So the logic is basically identical, but this time for the rate of return, it must be positive. So now this message here tells the user the rate of return must be greater than zero. And we present this message if the rate of return is less than or equal to zero. And we're going to prompt the user to enter the rate of return again if the entered rate of return is less than or equal to zero. We'll do the same thing for the total years to grow. So we'll copy this and paste it. And we're going to say the total years to grow also has to be positive. So we'll leave the logic here the same. We'll just have here years to grow. 
in here we'll have total years. I'll copy this and paste it here and here. And here I'll have years to grow. And to match the others, I'll change the variable name to camel case style. So we'll have total years like this. So then down here, the next thing we'll do is output the table. The first thing we'll do is output these column headings here. So we'll have C out and then N and line just to put some space in between the input and the output. And then we'll output the first column heading year. Now, in order to get these nicely aligned columns here, what we'll do is output each column heading and the data in that column into fields with a set width. We'll use the IOMANIP library to help with this. So up here, we'll include IOMANIP. Then down here, we'll use setW. So we'll have here the stream manipulator setW. We'll have setW 10. What this is going to do is output the string year into a field with 10 characters in width. If we do this for each column, with both the heading and the data in that column, we'll have this effect of a nicely formatted table. So here we'll have set w, and we'll have 18 for this column, and we'll have start balance, then we'll have c out, set w, and 16 for interest. We'll have c out and set w with 16 for end balance, and then we'll output an end line. The next thing we'll do is output the row of stars here to separate the column headings from the data. Here we have 60 stars total. We get that by adding together the column widths here. So 10 plus 18 plus 16 plus 16 gives us 60. So we'll make a loop that's going to run exactly 60 times by having a counter variable i go from zero up until 60 by one with each loop iteration. And with each loop iteration, we'll output a star. Then after all that, we'll output an end line. Next, we'll create a loop to output the table data. What we'll do is use a counter variable for the year. We'll have here for int year is equal to one, year is less than or equal to total years, and then we'll have year plus plus. So each time in this loop, we're going to take the year and add one to it. We'll keep doing that until year is equal to the total years. That's going to be the last time this loop body runs. So now when we output the year in each row, we'll have C out and set W 10 followed by the year. So each year is going to be output into a field of width 10. That's going to match this column heading here. We'll do the same thing for start balance, interest, and end balance. So next, we'll have here C out and set W 18, and we'll output balance. So whatever balance is, is going to be the start balance for that year. Now when outputting the dollar figures here, we're going to keep them to two decimal places. We'll use two other stream manipulators to help with this. So here we'll have fixed and then set precision with two. And when used together, these two stream manipulators are going to cause the balance to output with two decimal digits of precision. Next, we'll calculate the interest. So here we'll have double interest is equal to the balance multiplied by the rate of return divided by 100. Then we'll add the interest and the annual contribution to the balance to give us the end balance for the year. So we'll have here annual contribution. Then we'll put the interest and the end balance. So we'll have here C out and then set W 16 again to match this up here for the column heading. And we'll have again, fixed with set precision two. 
and we'll have interest. Then for the end balance, we'll have C out, set W16 with fixed and set precision two with balance. And this time we're putting the end balance. I'll just fix this and output an end line to end each row. Then up here, I'll fix this. This here should be rate of return. Okay, if we save compile and run the program, we could enter in an invalid initial deposit. So for example, we could enter in negative one. If we do, we'll be asked to enter the initial deposit again. If we enter in another invalid input, we'll keep being asked to enter in a valid input until we do. We'll enter in an initial deposit of 10,000. We'll have an annual contribution of 1,000. We'll have a rate of return of 7.25. And for years to grow, we'll have 10. Now we get a neatly formatted table showing the savings growth over 10 years. So this is how we can create a savings calculator in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.